Hello friends, this is Tom and I'm back in my rabbit hole. Um, we've been on vacation for the last couple weeks and uh, but we're back in the shop and, and ready to uh, ready to make things happen. Uh, today we're going to be making a bevel gear for the hobbing attachment for the Van Norman milling machine. Uh, these are big beefy gears. They're made out of 01 tool steel and um, we've talked about the, the dimensions and the setup and, and how you construct these gears and how you manufacture these gears in the last couple videos. Uh, but today we're actually gonna make one. Uh, I'm gonna start out by making it the wrong way and I'll explain what happened when I did that. And, uh, and then we'll make one the right way. Well, this drive gear for the hobbing attachment, uh, this is the one that actually drives the, the hob. And uh, it's gonna be uh, 40 teeth, 10 DP. The outer diameter is just a little over six inches. And so I need to machine this to diameter and then put the, the 45 degree face on it for the actual tooth. The reason this is being made so big is because it needs to serve a function uh, both as a drive gear and a flywheel uh, to try to take some of the impulsiveness out of the, the torque reaction uh, due to the hob. So I decided to make this uh, gear three and a half inches thick and I'm also not relieving the front face or the OD the way you would normally do with the belt gear because taking mass away is not really what I want to do. I want to, I want to make sure it's a, a massive kind of flywheel weight at the drive end of the, the hob spindle. At this point, the blank has been machined to its correct OD, which I think is 6.24 inches, give or take. And I've adjusted the compound to put the 45 degree face on it. Uh, what I usually do in this instance is I try to put a, a mark on the face using the digital readout on the lathe and then uh, machine the angled face down until it touches that mark and then check the width of the machine face. It should be three quarters of an inch if I've done my sums correctly. Well, this is how to do it wrong. Uh, the cutter speed's too low, and I'm cutting in a direction uh, that um, has a tendency to make the work lift into the tool. So that's exactly what happened. So when the cut got heavy enough, the work lifted, jammed the cutter against the work, uh, stripped the key out of the arbor and broke the heck out of my DP-10 cutter. And um, so that's a lesson learned or perhaps a lesson remembered from long ago when I've done the similar thing uh, in other circumstances. But it uh, forced me to, uh, to make a new arbor and that's this next little bit of ludicrous speed.
And this is doing it better at least. If not right, it's at least better. I reversed the direction of the spindle and I'm cutting from uh, left to right in this case. So the table is feeding um, right to left. And it took me a bit of feeling around to get to the right depth of cut. Okay, this is what it looks like after the... I actually took three passes to make the gash here because it's pretty deep, it's 270. Um, part of that was just me figuring out feeds and speeds and, and I started out with a slow spindle speed and I was hitting it so hard I was knocking the, the dividing head around. Uh, so I cranked up the spindle speed to about 400 RPM and I'm, so that works out to be just a little over 200 feet per minute. And that seems to be a pretty good place. Uh, that last pass was 95 deep and um, at that speed and, and it, the cutting forces were within the capability of the system. Um, pretty substantially within, I would say. So. What we're ready to do now is do the table offset. So I'm going to offset 98 thou this way, and I'm going to go a quarter tooth that way. Um, sorry, a half tooth, a quarter pitch this way, which is seven holes on my 28 um, hole uh, circle, uh, dividing plate circle. And that should put us in just the right spot to flank one side of that tooth. I've already got the sectors on the dividing head set up for seven holes. Seven out of 28 is, uh, or sorry, 28 divided by four is seven. So um, our offset, our angular offset is gonna be uh, seven holes. And I'm gonna advance the thing this way. At the same time, I need to unlock the y-axis and I need to bring this back 98 thou right there and I will lock it again um, and now this operation is just this simple unlock the head and move it seven holes. I need to take the lash out. There we go. So I'm gonna go all the way around again uh, and touch every tooth this way. down to the last few teeth here. It's a lot of machine hours to make this gear. Five passes. Not bad. That's my test piece. I'm giving it the wiggle test right now. It seems to be just fine. This gear looks a little odd because I didn't dish the, um, the front face and I didn't relieve the back face like you normally would, but I did that just to put a little bit of extra meat in the tooth for strength purposes. This is going to be a drive gear. Um, 
I haven't done any real computational engineering on this, but uh, I, I'm prepared to go with what looks right. Um, and because of the funny shape, this, this tooth shape looks a little weird here. Well, this is the, uh, the result of all the learning, I guess, on the first pass. Um, this is the second gear. This is smaller. It's a little, um, it's got the same tooth count, but it's narrower, I guess. Uh, it doesn't need to be quite as massive. And uh, when I got the cutting speed and everything uh, set up the way it should be, it, the, it was more than capable of taking a full depth cut. So this is cutting each tooth gash at 270 thousandths. So this gear will be made with three passes instead of five, which is good from my standpoint. Well, I'm not going to show all the passes. Uh, at some point, this stuff becomes a bit repetitive, not to say tedious. Um, it's been a good learning project for me. There's been uh, there's been a few mistakes, but I feel like I'm uh, just a little bit better at doing this than I was when I started. And that's sometimes the best you can do for uh, These bevel gears came out pretty well. Um, Thanks for hanging in there through this whole process. There's a lot more to come, obviously, as this project unfolds. 
Uh, I'll be sure to keep you updated. Thanks for watching.